Earn great returns on your money with the safety and security of a community bank. Bank of Clark is offering 4.85% annual percentage yield on six-month CDs, 5% APY on 12-month CDs and IRAs, and 4.95% APY on nine-month CDs. Visit your local Bank of Clark branch today or go to bankofclark.bank. We're the bank for that. Member FDIC. Limited time offer. Rate subject to change at any time. Minimum balance of $1,000 on CDs. Welcome to Mom and Dad are Fighting, Slate's parenting podcast for Monday, June 26th, the Grandparenting Solo Edition. I'm Jamila Lemieux, a writer, contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's 10, and we live in Los Angeles. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom of three littles, Henry, who's 11, Oliver, who's 9, and Teddy, who's 6. We currently live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm Zach Rosen. I make another show. It's called The Best Advice Show. And I'm dad to Noah, who is five, and Ami, who's two. We live in Detroit. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about a group of parents who rarely get the credit they deserve. Grandparents who are acting as parents. We're going to be joined by award-winning author Desiree Cooper about her experience raising three kids alone at the age of 62. All that after this quick break. Raising kids is one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life. But let's be real. Some days parenting can be relentless. I Love My Kid, But is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by comedians Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Braunohler, they will be your resident not-so-expert experts. Each week, they'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, yes, I have absolutely been there. They'll talk about what went right and wrong and what they would do differently. And the next time you step on another stray Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you'd like to laugh while listening to comedians vent about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid But, wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on Amazon Music or the Wondery app. This podcast is brought to you by Marvel Studios' Secret Invasion, now streaming only on Disney+. Plus. Nick Fury has returned in his most thrilling mission yet. An invasion is here, and there's no telling who the invaders are. They can take the form of anyone and have infiltrated our society and government at the highest levels. The only thing we do know, trust no one. Trust nothing. In Marvel's most riveting series yet, prepare for war. Prepare for fury. In Marvel Studios' Secret Invasion, don't miss the six-episode event now streaming only on Disney+. Plus. We're back and now joined by Desiree Cooper, who wrote a wonderful piece for the New York Times called What If I Hadn't Been There to Catch Them? Des, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Des, I haven't seen you, I don't know how long it's been, COVID has skewed time entirely, but like, we hadn't spoken in a few years, and then I I didn't even realize you've moved down to the Virginia Beach area out of Detroit, and you are taking care of a nine and a six and a four-year-old, and you are the grandma. Uh, Let me correct you there. Um, They are not allowed to call me grandma, so you don't get to either. (laughs) It is Zsa Zsa I love that. You're a full-time Zsa now. I had no idea until I read your stunning modern love essay. Congratulations and oh my God, like how is it going? How are you? Okay, well, first of all, I am so happy to be here in my own space, having a little spotlight on me, 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 because that has not happened in a while. You deserve it. And there are a lot of people out there that are working so hard, so low to make sure kids have a good chance at life. And I got tagged to be one of those people. I thought I was done. I have two adult children. And my daughter has been in a difficult marriage. And to make sure at least the kids are getting what they need, I said, I'm going to hold on to these littles until you guys get it together. And so I, at the age of 62, I took in the kids. It was sort of an overnight decision. So I had like nothing in place. They lived near me. So I, it's not like I took strangers into the house and I love my babies, 
but I had really forgotten, whoosh, how hard little ones really, really are. And so I kind of got back into the deep end. And even now I look back, Zach, it's actually been almost two years since I've had them. So they're now transitioning up in age, as am I. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I might have to admit in sort of a therapeutic way that maybe now I'm ready to be a mom. And uh, when I was raising my kids in my 20s and 30s, I had a lot of ambitions of my own. And I was always in conflict. I mean, I knew for real that I had to do the best for the children. They were very wanted and very loved children. But it was always uh, just a little sprinkling of resentment or when is it going to be my turn? So, you know, three decades later, it was my turn. And then it wasn't. (laughs) But I'm finding that at this point, I think COVID had something to do with this as well, where priorities just got really whipped around. Like, what? Come on now. What's really, really important? My people are my more, most important things. I would say that as a mother, but it was because you're supposed to say it as a mother. There were many times where I thought, no, really, I'm the most important thing. <laughs> Not these babies. But I really do feel like, okay, I've had a chance, and they have to have one too. And so now when I compete, it's less. I'm just more comfortable in the role than I was in my 30s. How did you manage that transition? Because to me, like, grandparenting is so different from parenting. You had two, you went to three. For for me, like, two to three was total chaos because I've got three littles. And mine was gradual, right? Like you got three kind of all at once. Like, how did you manage that? I know you're still managing it because your piece talks about that. Like, were you able to make that overnight kind of shift in your brain? Or has it been kind of gradually figuring out where that line is now? Well, no. So immediately there was no line. I'm the parent. Period. You know, it wasn't a shift from grandparent, like, I don't know. It's just automatically I'm the parent. And so that means a different kind of person than a typical grandparent. And so I kind of went into that. I just went back 30 years into, okay, we have to be organized. You have to listen when I say things. You know, we just have to be on point. And I did very much try to make it a team. I call us Team Rock Creek. And that's the street address. So we're Team Rock Creek and Team Rock Creek is going to get this together And it's almost like I would think, well, I can't even put my feet in the shoes of someone who's experienced a death with little kids around. But on some level, I think I had to have no grief for myself and really just pump it into the kids in the household. You're in your writing room right now. I know that you write a lot. You're an amazing fiction writer and poet and nonfiction writer and columnist and I mean, all this stuff. So you didn't flip into the grief, but like, what do you find you need to do when you're not with them to like, keep it together? Right. (laughs) That's part of it. A lot of it. Yeah. I think one day a horn is just going to poke right on my forehead. Like processing. Come on, you guys got kids. What processing? You're in a foxhole, right? Like, come on. And so that's where I am, too. I'm right there with you. So I think it's really more of a forward motion than it is a backward motion. It's like, let's discover something new. Let's laugh at something else. Let's cuddle. Let's build a tent in the backyard. And I'm in that space where while I'm building the tent, unlike you guys, I'm like, well, we got all afternoon. Let's see how we make that work, you know? And when I was in your shoes, I didn't have all afternoon, you know? And so I think it's the forward motion and just a little more context, just just in case you don't feel sorry enough for me. I'm also taking care of my parents. I mean, the whole way I even got into this caregiving 
mode is that I moved from Detroit, where I knew Zach very well, down to Virginia, in with my parents, both of whom have Alzheimer's. My dad passed away in 2020 in the middle of COVID. He did not have COVID, but so we're in COVID. I'm hunkered down with parents. One passes away. My mom will be 90 in August. So on top of everything, I have a very, very recent lesson in aging, in loss, in terror that the world's about to end, concern about what kind of future this planet is going to offer our babies, yours and mine. And so I'm much more in a space of, yeah, we're going to take all afternoon to build this tent. And if something else doesn't get done, whatever probably more than you can get in it in a child launching stage. I get choked up because it really is a gift. It really is. I mean, I feel like I'm getting a do-over. Grandparents say that a lot, like they get to, you know, play and spoil and everything, but I'm literally getting to raise and have like a wake-up call. I wake up and there are four eyeballs looking at me. They've been standing and looking at me sleep. You know, <laughs> the little one sleeps a lot, so it was only four eyeballs, not six. Yeah, I was doing the math, but I didn't. <laughs> that's good. okay. Got it. How do you find time for yourself, considering that you've got a house full of little ones and you don't have the village that you did in Detroit? What is you know, are you able to give the kids to your brother for a night? Can you go get a massage on a Sunday afternoon? What does taking care of you look like? A lot like when I was parenting instead of reparenting. I just, I just was in war for years. And then as they got older, I could take more time. So honestly, I mean, like even now I'll schedule a massage and then I get the call from school and somebody's got a weird cough and they want me to come get them or I... I remember I tell this story from my first go round where people were telling me to do things for myself. So I signed up for yoga and I signed up for yoga during my lunch hour, which doesn't exist and hasn't for decades for anybody. And when it was supposed to be lunchtime, Someone might stop in my office and say, hey, you know, I want you to look at this and we need to turn this around in two hours and can you blah, blah, blah. And I would be so full of anxiety and resentment as 12 came because that was my time. It was sacred time for yoga. I couldn't do it afterwards because I have kids after work. And I just gave up. It was the most stressful thing that ever happened to me was trying to do yoga at noon. (laughs) And when I stopped doing it, I was cool. I had worked through lunch every day of my life before then. And the minute I tried to put something on the schedule that was mine, it became so intensely important that it just ruined my day. So at this point, I just grab it when I can. I do schedule things, but I find I get super disappointed and I start thinking, there it goes again. Of course, nothing's going to happen for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me feel sadder. So I just sort of am a a grabber of moments. That's another good headline. Like young mother says yoga ruined her life. (laughs) Well, it'd be better than old woman (laughs) takes over three kids. (laughs) What are the most rewarding aspects of raising your grandchildren? They are hilarious and they are crazy. Every last one of them has such an extreme, different personality and big. Like, I don't have a shy one. And so they are just big, funny personalities in my life. And they really crack me up. I really have a good time with them. Now getting to do it, a lot of it over again, what do you find like you're better prepared for? Not doing it right. I don't even care. Don't tell anybody. But I really didn't even look at their report cards. Like, unless a teacher calls me or checks in with me, 
I, you know, that's taken care of. I, it's that's not great. my department. That's great. Whereas before you were a stickler or? Oh, absolutely. In fact, you know how that homework oppression starts happening. And I had the kids call me, I guess I'm big on these names, but they went from calling me mom to Miss Cooper. Like they had to call me Miss Cooper from about 6 to 7.30 every day because Miss Cooper was the teacher doing the homework. And that way, I don't know, it was just a way to apologize. Like this isn't really me. This is the me that has to be here right now. And then when we stop, you can call me mom again and we can talk to mom. And I would even do like a third person. I'm telling Miss Cooper that you didn't do so and so, you know, and Miss Cooper's gone. Just Jaja's here now. I don't even and don't give me a STEM toy for a birthday. <laughs> what do you want? Instead? Because I'm getting you a gift this year. Well, you know, bubbles and jump ropes and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. STEM toys, that's homework. Mm-hmm. I'm not putting it together and going through instructions. And d- I'm not doing that. <laughs> so it's not that I don't care about their education or their accomplishments. You know, like the oldest, is he can tell you every football statistic there ever was. He's commentating the whole, whatever sports it, it doesn't matter. He knows everything about all of the sports. And he says he wants to play football. We put him in a league that was competitive. And much to my delight, he got hit, got a bruise on his arm. And he said, eh, that's it. I'm not <laughs> doing it anymore. So I'm happy that's over That's now. great. That's great. But... I think ordinarily I would have made him stick out the season. I would have made him try it until uh, he was certain. But when he said he didn't want to and he wasn't interested, I said, no pressure. Let's do something different. I wouldn't have done that as a first mile. Yeah. What, I guess, advice do you have for, you know, other grandparents who are either thinking about this or kind of like you wake up and now, you know, there's Jaja. What, what advice do you have? This comes by people in so many different ways. You know, I mean, it's hard for me to give advice because it could be um, a death that brings them to this. It could be a serious estrangement or illness. And all of those require a really different set of skills. But I think that just to take the pressure down a notch, try as much as you can to relax through it. And I don't mean, I'm anxious, you know. I'm in therapy, okay? So it's not, it's not easy. But by that, I just mean like, whatever you don't have to sweat, don't sweat. And just get the basics. Are the clothes clean? Is there somewhere for them to sleep? Is there some kind of food that may not be perfect there for them? And that goes for parenting the first time around as well. Even though I think it's a lot harder because the pressure is so... I'm given permission because I'm an old woman with three kids, right? (laughs) But the pressure on first-time parents is so extraordinary, which is why this podcast is so, so... Awesome. <laughs> We're linking your piece in the show notes. Uh, go check it out, everyone. Des, will you stick around for recommendations? Oh, I'd love to. We'll be back in just a moment. Raising kids can be one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life. But let's be real. Some days, parenting can be relentless. I Love My Kid But is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by comedians Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Browneler, they will be your resident, not-so-expert experts. Each week, they'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, yes, I have absolutely been here. They talk about what went right and wrong and what they should do differently. And the next time you step on yet another Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you'd like to laugh while listening to comedians vent about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid, but wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Priceline presents Go to Your Happy Price. What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. 
When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself already there. It's beautiful. It might be sunny and sandy for some, neon and urban for others, deserts or rainforests or hiking trails. With Priceline, you can get to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. Like up to 60% off select hotels to Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to Priceline.com and travel to your happy place for a happy price. All right, see ya. I'm off to Miami. No, actually, wow, look at that. No, I, I'm going to Hawaii now. Ooh, Cancun looks nice. You know what? Belize looks pretty nice this time of year. Or, mmm, Palm Springs. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. A lot of us probably struggle with sleep hygiene, how to fall asleep, stay asleep, and get restful sleep. But did you know that improving your sleep hygiene could help improve your overall health? Health Break, a podcast by UPMC Health Plan, dives into this topic with advice and tips you can use from our expert wellness health coaches. Listen now to find out how you can start improving your sleep at upmchp.us slash healthbreaksleep. That's upmchp.us slash healthbreaksleep. All right, let's move on to recommendations. Elizabeth, what are you recommending? Okay, so I found these. um, They're called Sketch Pals Doodle Boards, and they're from Boogie Board. They're little LCD, like, tablet writers. And if you have kids like mine that can go through a whole notebook of paper, uh, this really helped us on our recent trip, and I'm hoping on the move. I let each of them pick out a fun They are like little pets. One of them has a dog and the board is like in its mouth. And the kids just like doodled on these the whole time. And they're they're small, like one of those little pocket notebooks and they clip onto their bags or whatever. But I mean, they made up all these games with them. And if they drew something that they really loved, I just snapped a picture of it so we could keep it before they erased it. But it beat me carrying around crayons and little notebooks and running out. I mean, paper is usually kind of widely available, but this just really, I think, simplified what I had to carry. And I'm looking forward to that particularly as I'm kind of traveling alone with the three. They all have one of these. We made up games like two of them. The board is in the animal's mouth. And so we would play like, what did the animal eat? And they would draw something and we would guess what they ate. They played, you know, tic-tac-toe, did doodles in museums with them. And again, I didn't have to worry about them marking on the museum thing. So they're super cute. Go check them out. They worked for us. Sketch Pals Doodle Board from Boogie Board. Nice. Des, what are you recommending? Well, I said earlier books are my life, so I got to go with a book. I don't know if you guys have seen, there, there's two books, but the one that I think that your listeners are going to love the most is called Crowned Magical Folk and Fairy Tales from the Diaspora. There's this husband and wife couple that have reimagined some of these classic fairy tales in African garb. I don't know even how to describe it. It looks like steampunk meets Africa meets, I don't know, Afrofuturism. And the images are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. And kids can look at these images and just their minds are blown and they just tell their own stories. But they're in the context of things like Snow White and Cinderella and mermaids, like all those classical stories, but they're reimagined visually. The book is stunning. Just you got to get it. It's called Crowned ED, Magical Folk and Fairy Tales. They were on um, the CBS Sunday Morning Show last Sunday. I don't know if you've seen that. I saw two of the pictures pop up on Instagram and save them, but had no idea that they were connected to a book. So I am going to order this now because I showed the kids, you know, like, gosh, look at how beautiful these are. And there was one like from like maybe Hansel and Gretel and like Uh candy. And I mean, just these beautiful, but not not like you said, there's so much like heritage and beadwork and just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And one kid um, has vitiligo. So he has different coloring map on his skin. And so but they use that to the service of the story and to make him normal and magical. I don't know. It's, it's astounding. Yeah, get it. Sounds great. (laughs) Very nice. 
uh, and I have Glory, the picture book that the authors of Crown put together a few years ago. It's really beautiful. They're photographers who just take these amazing images of black kids dressed up as royalty. Oh, this one looks beautiful, too. Zach, what about you? So I was at the park last week, and I complimented a mom on the fact that she brought her own like comfy looking folding chair. Um, and I started talking to her and she said she found that the the wooden benches at the park just weren't great for her back. And therefore her kids couldn't stay at the park as long because she was always uncomfortable and, you know, wanted to go. And so once she started just keeping a chair in her trunk, she's much more comfortable at the park now and can, can stay there much longer. So if you are someone who's like wanting to be more comfortable at the park, Maybe just put a comfy chair in your trunk and, and let it live there. It seems obvious, but I was like, oh, that's a great idea. What are you going to recommend, Jamila? So Naima and I have been watching Guinea and Georgia on Netflix. Um, it's a show about a white single mom raising two children. She's got a son who's about eight or nine, and she's got a biracial 15-year-old daughter. And the mom is a hustler. She's done some illegal things over the years to make ends meet. They move from city to city, barely planting roots anywhere before they go somewhere else. Um and she and her daughter have this really complicated relationship. You know, it's informed by race um, and just their circumstances. And it's really good. Um, I often complain that Netflix shows over index and biracial black girls. Oftentimes the actresses on Netflix family or kids shows that are playing the children of two black parents are biracial but this is one of the rare times that they actually have a biracial I, I'm assuming the actress is biracial but playing an actual biracial character where they're exploring what that means and you know some of the issues that exist for her in terms of grappling with her identity and the ways that her mom can't always relate to her and it's really interesting so I mean there's sex and self-harm, so um, not good for small kids, but it's a good show. And Naima's been enjoying it, too. You said you were watching with her? Yeah. Yeah, Naima's really enjoying it. Wait, I just have one more quick one, um, as long as we were talking about books before. Um, there is a book that, it's a buddy story that spans generations and a love letter to the Black family connections that survive the Great Migration. It's called Nothing Special, and it's written by someone I know, someone who's on the show this moment, Des Cooper, and illustrated by Beck Sloan. Um, this is Des's children's book that came out last year, which you should totally check out. Thanks, Zach. That was seamless. I love that. Because <laughs> <laughs> Des, for people that don't know, Des has written, she's been a columnist, a public radio reporter, a poet. And is this your first children's book? It's my first children's book, and it landed. Um, the New York Library chose it as one of the top 10 best children's books of 2022. And it's won a couple other prizes. So I'm just like, whoosh. Um, I can brag about this, if you don't mind, because I didn't Please. do the illustrations. I only did the story. The illustrations were done by a fabrication artist. So if you think of claymation or stop animation, that's what it looks like inside of the book. Every single thing down to the flowers, the grass, the water is handmade out of fabric. And it is mind blowing how beautiful it is. And for me, it's, it's a love letter because it uh, depicts my oldest, Jax, who is now 10, um, and my dad, who, Pop Pop, who these two became great buddies um, when we started living near each other. So it's based on their friendship. So special. And so there's a lot of heart in there. So it's called Nothing Special. And my website is Des Cooper, D-E-S, DesCooper.com. So you can go there and find out more about it. These are so, I mean, I'm just looking at pictures of them, of the illustrations. They are, who's going to do like the museum show of your book? <laughs> Let's get some. Don't I you? I mean, they're so beautiful. Thank you. I have to order this. I'm only looking at a couple pages, but good grief. 
Yeah, it's a beautiful, Lovely. beautiful book. And it's it's a picture book, so three-year-olds are kind of like where I was headed. But I've done this um, in schools up for second and third graders, and they like it too because the illustrations are so rich, and they get into conversations about things that are in the pictures that are not in the words, which we purposely did. And um, so there's just a lot to take apart, a lot to discuss in a lot of kids can relate to having that buddy that's a lot older than them <laughs> that kind of takes them into new adventures. So you're never too old for a picture book ever. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Des, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me here. It's been fun to just kind of talk and get it out. So yeah, nice, nice good you. therapy. I love it. <laughs> good to see anytime. you anytime. Come join us anytime. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. Oh, thanks. I'd love to. This episode of Mom and Dad are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson, Maura Curry, and Tori Dominguez. Shasha Leonard is the voice of our listeners. Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. For Zach Rosen and Elizabeth Newcamp, I'm Jamila Lemieux. Thanks for listening. Hey, everybody. It's Tim Heidecker. You know me, Tim and Eric, Bridesmaids, and uh, Fantastic Four. I'd like to personally invite you to listen to Office Hours Live with me and my co-hosts, DJ Doug Pound. Hello. And Vic Berger. Howdy. Every week we bring you laughs, fun, games, and lots of other surprises. It's live. We take your Zoom calls. Music. We love having fun. Excuse me? Songs. Vic said something. Music. Songs. Music. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. Please subscribe now.